If you've got a Husqvarna 440 chainsaw series or something similar and you're having trouble keeping your chain sharpened, it may be the oiling mechanism that's inside the chainsaw that gets the bar chain oil to the chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this in real time of how I'm going to disassemble and kind of diagnose what the problem is. So let's go ahead and do it. You've got a cover plate that goes on your, that goes over your bar. If you've ever adjusted or changed your, tra your, your chain, then you've taken this off before. So this is the first thing that's going to need to come off. Uh, one thing that you need to make sure of is that you make sure that your, that this kickback protection is not in the forward lock position. If it was in the forward lock position and you take this cover off, it's really difficult to get back on. So there's our screw, or our nut, and the cover. Now, just initially, you can cut, you can see on this bar, and, and, and there are they're flipped over. So there's one that's on the opposite side on top, so that you can put this on in 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 both directions, both this way and this way. There is a port that's right here, and I'll take it off, so you can see. with the chain off and this bar coming off you can see that there's another port right here and this is one of the culprits so if you are pumping bar chain oil so uh, and one I'll tell you how to check that in a second but if you are pumping bar chain oil and this is clogged then that oil is not going to be getting up into this groove where your chain rides and, and then it's not going to be in, lubricating the chain so cleaning this and all and the guide that the chain sits in is a, an important uh, step in this process. So in order to see if, if the internal problem, the internal pump is the problem, is I can start this right now and it should pump bar chain oil out of this slot. And if it does not, then there's something wrong internally. If it does, then most likely your bar, that this hole has been the culprit. But in this particular case, this one is not pumping oil bar chain oil so I know that I need to remove this. So the next step in order to get to behind this cover plate is I need to remove this clutch and the process to do that is we need to stop up the cylinder so that it will seize up and not move and then break this free because right now it's been spinning in this direction and it's tightening itself and so uh, we need to tight we need to loosen it in that same direction. Uh, so in order to do that I pop the cover. This one has three clasps. Remove the cover. And then remove the spark plug. So with the spark plug removed, I've got a soft fabric rope. And I'm going to slide it into the cylinder cavity. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this is not going to mar up the inside of the cylinder or mar up this, the uh, piston head, but it'll allow me to stop the cylinder as it rises towards the top, or stop the piston as it rises towards the top of the cylinder. So I've got it stuffed in here. And just be careful not to gouge the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and see how I can stuff a lot of it in there. Then, if you can see on this bar, ch this uh, this chain clutch, it has a catch here and a catch here. And I can take a a punch and a and a hammer, and I can hit it. And now this one was pretty loosened, so you gotta think they'll be pretty tight. This one was loosened. So it's spun off, but it might take you a couple of taps. But once you do that, then you can remove that clutch and remove the, the uh, guide the clutch is in. And then you've got a, this is a, uh, some needle bearings. And then right here, this is your worm gear. Now it's a cover. It's a worm gear that's on the backside. And this is, this is really what makes that pump drive. So we're gonna pop the worm gear out see and really all this is like a spring that's in there and it rides in you can see you got a little you've got a, a pump piston that's in here and it 
when this spins, it turns that pump piston, which turns the pump and pumps the oil out here. So now that we've got that removed, we can remove the cover by removing this screw. And here's that pump piston. And if you look at it, I can tell already, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the whole thing out. It's got some damage, this right here, so we're gonna need to replace that. And also, it is really tight in there, and you can hear it making some noise, so it may have gotten really hot and, and it won't come out. So I'm, I'm gonna have to grab it with some leverage and pull it out of there. I'll, so I'll show you how easily it's supposed to go in there with a new one. <clears throat> See, a new one should sl slide in there. Look how easy that is. Slide in and slide out. So this is supposed to turn. So that could have been the other problem is that somehow it heated up and it seized and then the worm, got, worm gear just spin and just ripped those off. So I already know that this needs to go back in here. And this would be a good time to clean this out. So I'm gonna walk over to the side real fast and clean it out. Okay, this is the hose that leads up to where it feeds the chain. But there's a port that's right here and that's where your, your bar chain oil comes out of. So I'm just making sure that that, pass, that passway is clean. So now we can go back with the reassembly. So here is the, here's the old one. Here's the new one. Let me clean out a little bit more of this junk. So the new one's going in. Yeah, it spins nice and easily. In, our, in this particular case, we have a new cover. And that may have, so you can see the old cover. Where's the old cover? This could have been one of the problems, is somehow it ripped off this bottom piece and all this garbage got in there and it could have created a problem as far as lubricating that bar and lubricating that pump. So there's our cover back in place. Now for good measure, I've got a new worm, guy, worm gear here. rather than the old one. Just in case I had a problem, I went ahead and put a new one, got a new one in here. So now our needle bearing, clutch housing, and the clutch itself. I'll get it nice and tight. It'll tighten itself when it runs. So just hand tight is good. Now we can put the chain back on. I'm gonna go blow this out. I'm just cleaning these little ports with some carburetor cleaner and making sure that my chain guide is clear. So before I even put the chain on, if you really wanna test it, you can start, once you've got your assembly back together, you can grab this housing because it'll turn that internal gear and you can turn it. And if you've got it flat, you'll be able to see that you've already got oil and I can already see bar chain oil coming up into this into this groove right here and that marries with the hole that's on the bar chain the uh, bar so like right now we can see that our piston is turning inside there and it's feeding oil into this little slot okay something else you can do is you can start this as long as your clutch is tight and watch it pump oil into this slot so I'm going to start it
So after running it now, you can see that sheen of oil in that groove. So we know that that pump is working and getting oil up into this slot. Now a quick reassembly. You can see there's that, that clean port. It's right here. Now when we flip it up, it goes right in line with that slot. We'll slot the chain on. cover on. Of course you need to make sure that your spark plug is in tight. Just connect it. Even after changing uh, those parts I still struggled to get the bar chain oil onto the chain. And part of that problem was is this pickup that's on the inside of the oil compartment had some garbage in it. So once I cleaned that out, I ran the saw and dropped it near this cardboard. And you can see on the cardboard where these lines are. And this is bar chain oil that is now spinning off of the chain. So the chain is getting lubricated. So that might be an additional thing you might want to check when changing your oil pickup on your Husqvarna chainsaws.